Hi, this is Tom Passero, and I'm going to provide you with some guidance as to what you need to accomplish in problem set two, which has to do with freight rates and classifications. What I'm going to show you are two sample problems straight from the textbook. The first one is problem eight from problem set number two page 423 and problem 10 on page 424. Now <clears throat> I'll do two tapes. The first one for pre problem 8 and then the second tape will be on problem 10. But they'll still all be on the same um, uh, spreadsheet example that I'm going to give you. Uh, first of all, it's a good idea to read chapter 8, of course to get a good idea of how freight classifications and rates are established. And the problems that you have are similar to the ones that I'm going to show you. Now, problem set to number eight, as I said, is on page 423, uh, asks two basic questions. And to answer those questions, you're going to have to refer to tables 8.7 and 8.8 .8, which I have off to the right here on the screen. One has to do with motor freight classifications and the other has to do with rates from a specific exam uh, destination to destination uh, uh, source to a destination. Uh, that happens to be the ones that you'll be using in your problems as well. Okay so the first part of the question has to do with some company called Chatter Industries and again it's taken right from the book. The uh, first part A wants to find out the product classifications for LTL and TL and of course you know that LTL stands for less than truckload and TL stands for truckload and of course if you were to read the chapter you'll find out that there's all kind of different product classifications uh, that you'll ever want to know and these people have decided what type of classifications uh, and it's all relative and the higher the classification number the higher the freight rate is probably going to be and the lower of course the lower the freight rate was going to be but they have it all categorized and they give you an example on table 8.7 uh, has to do with glass so the question part a from prop uh, from problem eight starts out with a particular description item 86 960 glassed glazed glass boxed and they're looking for the less than truckload and the truckload classes well this is simple we just go to 86 960 which is right here I'll just use the pen to highlight it and it says glazing units, glass, not in sash, and it gives you a bunch of different things in boxes, and that seems to match our description. So what you have here is less than truckload class is 70, and a truckload class is 45. So let's just put those numbers in here. All right, it takes care of that one. The next one's looking for glass slides for microscopes all right so we have to kind of look around here and i see that we have something called glass microscopical slider cover in boxes now that's pretty close enough so let's just circle that oops sorry about that all right and you see the ltl is 70 and the tl is 40 and again these numbers will help determine the uh, the rates that you have to pay. So just like the first one, not quite like the first one, 70 and 40. All right. And then last but not least, the next one is bent mirror glass dimension seven by five feet. Well, kind of have to look a little bit for this. And I'm just looking at the glass and glass and I see bent here. Uh, but I'm gonna have to look a little bit further here and it looks like one might be 
exceeding 120 inches, uh, but not exceeding 15 by 9. Uh, this looks pretty close to what it is right here. So we'll just circle this. So that would be 100 for the less than truckload and 40 for the truckload. Okay? So like I said, there's many, many uh, uh, <clears throat> product classifications that you have. And someone has established this uh, uh, listing here so that you can figure out what the rates are. All right. Well, let's go to the next slide. And what we have here is the second part of problem eight. Shatter ships many of its products from a warehouse in Atlanta, Georgia to a distribution center in Lansing, Michigan. Find the applicable charges for the following shipments over the route using table 8.8. .8. Okay, well, like I said, we have table 8.8 .8 right here. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we want to do is figure out, based on the class, and it looks like, in this particular example, we're giving you the classes. We're looking for the particular rates per CWT. Now, if you read, you'll find out that CWT is per hundred weight. So essentially what you'll have to do, and we'll do this for you here, is take your total weight that you're going to ship and divide it by a hundred, and that's the rate you're going to multiply by that um, that quotient determine your total freight charge. All right, so let's look at let's look at a uh, let's fill out this chart here. Our first article is 5,200 pounds of mirrored shock glass, and it happens to be item 86900 subclass one, and 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 the, the 85 is the classification. All right, well, what we have to do. Are several things we're going to go directly to the class okay that's the first thing we do class 85 so we go down to class 85 all right I'm gonna just increase the size here oops let's get rid of that all right so we go down to class 85 and we're looking for a range of poundage that we're going to ship well, these weight limits are actually not necessarily inclusive. In other words, this should probably read 49999. So anything that uh, 5,000 or over, we're going to be looking at uh, this range. So we start out with weight class 85, and we go all the way over to where we have this range of, basically this is, 5,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds, from 5,000 to 10,000. And, and you see that right here. And we have a rate of $16.61 per hundredweight. All right, so we're just going to put that 61, six, excuse me, 1661 here. Okay. Now, what else are we looking for? What else are we have to find? So it's going to be for every hundred. So how do we figure that out? Well, all we have to do is simply divide 5,200 or 5,200 by 100. And you do that in your head and you're going to come out with 52. But I'm just going to plug in a little formula here, 5,200 divided by 100, and it's 52. And then all you have to do now is what? Multiply the rate per 100 weight times the, the 100 weight uh, number, or one number here divided by 100. And I'm just going to <coughs> do this with fancy dancy. Uh, Excel and time 
times two. And you come up with, and I've already formatted it so you have dollars, $863.72. Okay? Cool. All right. Now let's erase this. Let's look at the next one. What do we have? 32,000 pounds of class 65 product. First thing we do, of course, is go down to our class, and that's 65 right here. Then we go over to where it says 30, between uh, 30 and 40,000. And so we look up here, there's the 30,000 to 40,000 right down here, and we're in class 65. So that's going to be right here, correct? Right here, 65, 30, and it's going to be $6.41. I'm just going to put that over here, $6.41. And we have not 32,000 pounds, but we have to figure out our 100 weight. So that would be 32,000 divided by 100 equals 320 hundredweight. And similar to this, I'm just going to copy here. 2,051.20. dollars 20 cents would be our freight charge. Okay, excellent. You got the idea, I'm hoping. Get rid of this. All right, next one's a little interesting because what it's asking for is 200 pounds of class 60 product. Now I put a little note here, note the minimum charge of $81 at the top of table 8.8. Now if I didn't put that in here, you may be thinking, okay, well, I'm just gonna go right to here, product class 60, and since it's under 500 pounds, this would be my rate, 36.84. Uh, However, because there is a minimum charge of $81 right here, let's see what would happen if I put in the uh, charge of $36.84. I'm going to circle that. Excuse me, $36.84 right here. Class 60. So I put in 36.84. My 100 weight is what? 200 divided by 100. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll just copy and paste this. 73.68. But if you look at the minimum rate here minimum charge is eighty one dollars so that doesn't that doesn't work does it so this is basically null and void as well as this so I'm just gonna have to put in eighty one bucks okay because again it's a minimum charge all right let's get rid of these things Okay, last one. Again, more complex. You wouldn't want it any other way, right? So what you have here is a, an article that is, we're shipping 19,000 pounds of a class 150 product. Okay, so we know we're gonna be going to here. But look what the range is. The range over here is from 19, or excuse me, from 10,000 to 20,000 and 20,000 to 30,000. Actually, this would be 10,000 to 19,999. That's kind of confusing. I wish they would do that, but they don't. So you're thinking, wow, <coughs> I wonder if I should look at a couple different rates. Because I'm almost at the 20,000 rate, but I'm not quite there. So if I take it at the, this right here, the 10,000 to 
19,999 rate at class 150, I'm right here now, correct? That would be 2130. Oops, excuse me. Twenty-one thirty. Because again, nineteen thousand at class one fifty. So let's put that in there. Twenty-one thirty, and I have to do what? I have to take my nineteen hundred, nineteen thousand, and divide that by one hundred. And I just multiply this and I come up with four thousand forty seven dollars now let's say that I could go with that but what happens if I went to the 20,000 rate well, it's a little bit more complicated but you'll find that there's a savings there so let's check it out if I went at the 20,000 rate, look how much the rate goes down. It goes down all the way down to $13.20 per hundredweight. However, I can't necessarily put that all in at the 20,000 pound rate because I'm only shipping, what, 19,000 pounds. I mean, you're not going to let you do that. So let's see what we have to do to accomplish this. We know that, and I'm going to do a little extra uh, uh, table here. We know that we do have a rate of $13.20. Okay. We also know that our 100 rate is once again 19,000 divided by 100 okay so if we were to multiply this times this that's wrong sorry about that hold on a second Multiply thirteen dollars and twenty cents times one ninety. We'll just do that in here. Is twenty five. Let's put a. Let's put a. Uh, 2,508 all right however however we're not done yet because we still have to pay a penalty because we didn't quite get to the what the rate that we wanted so we're gonna have to pay what they call a, uh, a deficit charge a deficit charge essentially is something that you're paying because you haven't gotten to the the good rate the discounted not discounted rate but the lower lower uh, freight rate. So what we have to do is add on the charge of 13.2, which is the hundred weight of, of what's left. And what is left? Well, to get to 2,000, we need an extra thousand pounds, right? Or excuse me, to get to 20,000, we need an extra thousand pounds. So 20,000 minus 19,000 is 1,000. So we have to add an additional thousand pounds, but we still have to make it a hundred weight. Okay. And what we'll have here is, <clears throat> excuse me, this multiplied by this to come up with uh, the deficit. Uh, uh, weight that we have to come and add this to this particular uh, well, the 19,000 times the 20,000 rate all right so we multiply these together 
Let's see if I can copy this over here. Okay, so that's $132. And if we were to add these together, the 25, let's see if I can just do a quick add sum. seem to want to work. Let me just add it here. Twenty six. Twenty six, or excuse me, two hundred and sixty. 2,640, because I added this one here and this one here. That would be our total rate. Now, look at the, the difference. You look, it, you have a, at the higher weight rate, 20,000, it's going to cost me the 19,000, the 100 weight, 190, times the 20,000 pound rate. I have to add the deficit, which was the 1,000 that I have to make up, at the 100 rate of 10 multiplied by the 20,000 uh, pound weight rate and I add those two together it's still less than the 10,000 uh, pound rate significantly so I would of course be charged this particular weight so you can see by doing a little bit of uh, extra work you're gonna have a significant savings okay so now you hopefully have a better idea of how to find classifications product classes as well as figure out what these freight charges are again look for the class look for the rate per hundred weight make sure that your weight is put into the hundred weight by taking your total poundage and dividing it by a hundred and simply multiplying the two out. Look for any kind of minimum charges. And when you have a shipment weight that is close to the upper range of the uh, weight limits, it might be a good idea to uh, evaluate both the range limit within, it fall, within where it falls and the next level but remember, if you go to the next level, you'll have to account for the deficit. In other words, the, the minimal weight range here and what you're shipping and multiply that out and add it to what you had at the lower uh, weight rate in order to come up with a total. And in this particular case, it made sense to go to the next, next level. Okay, these should help you do... Um, uh, uh, your problem, some of your problems in your problem set two. And like I said, in the next tape, you'll have uh, uh, an additional uh, guidance in, in taking care of the uh, uh, another problem uh, from your problem set. Thanks a lot.